So I want to finish the uh, discussion of the fundamental vector subspaces of a matrix. We've talked about the uh, null space, the uh, vectors x such that, such, such that ax equals 0. We've talked about the column space, um, the vector space spanned by the columns of the matrix. And now there are two more subspaces called the row space and the left null space. So let's just uh, quickly review, right? So the, um, the let's say A is a M by N matrix, so M rows and N columns. So let's see, let's see where these uh, subspaces are, are subspa what spaces these subspaces are uh, subsets of, right? So if we look at the uh, null space of A, Right, that's a subspace of which uh, vector space? So the null space of A are these column vectors that multiply A. So the length of the column, the number of rows in the column vector should be equal to the number of columns of the matrix A. A is M rows and N columns. So this is a subspace of uh, all um, n by 1 uh, column vectors, right? Subspace of all n by 1 uh, matrices. Okay, so that's the null space. What about the uh, column space of A? So the column space of A uh, consists of vectors that have m rows. So this is a subspace of all m by 1 matrices, right? Um, now, how about the row space? So I'm going to, what is the row space, right? So the row space is the vector space spanned by the rows of the matrix A. But we're only talking about vectors that are column vectors. So you have to think of the transpose of the rows so that they're column vectors. But the vector space spanned by the rows is called the row space. But another way of looking that, at that is that that is the column space of the transpose matrix, right? So if you send the rows to the columns, then it's just the column space of the transpose matrix. And that one is a subspace of, so the uh, column space of A is a subspace of M by 1. So the column space of A transpose would be a subspace of N by 1, right? And finally, what's called the left null space of A. So those are all of these vectors if you write x on the left side of the matrix, so you write uh, x transpose a equals 0, and you look for those vectors x transpose, uh, and then uh, those are rows, but then you write them as column vectors, that would be called the left null space, so x transpose a equals 0. But another way of viewing it is just to transpose that whole equation, so it's the vectors x such that a transpose x equals 0. So this is actually just the null space of a transpose. Okay? So the null space of a is a subspace of n by 1 matrices. So the null space of a transpose is a subspace of m by 1 matrices. Okay? All right, so we have these four fundamental subspaces of a matrix. Two of them, I guess you can say, are associated with matrix A. Two of them are associated with the transpose matrix, if you like. Um, how do we match up these uh, larger subspaces? So the null uh, space of A and the row space of A are all, they're both subspaces of n by 1 uh, matrices. And the column space and the left null space are all subspaces of m by 1 matrices. Okay, so um, 
now what I want to do is I want to find uh, some relationship between these uh, subspaces. Um, for instance, let's do the row space and the null space. So remember what a null space is. Um, if we have AX equals zero, the null space of the matrix A is the set of all vectors X such that AX is equal to the zero column vector, right? All vectors X. But what this means is that we have um, the inner product of the rows of A with this column vector X, right? So AX, you, you go across the row of A and do, down the column of X. So this is the um, inner product of the row of A with the column vector X. X is in the null space. So the row times the column is zero. That means that the rows of A are orthogonal to the uh, null space. So the, the, the vectors in the row space of A, so vectors in the row space are orthogonal to vectors in the null space, okay? Because the row of A against the column vector X equals zero is an orthogonality relationship. So we say that these two spaces, these two subspaces are orthogonal to each other, okay? What about the dimensions? So what is the dimension of the null space? So remember that we find the uh, reduced row echelon form of A. So the uh, dimension of the null space of A was equal to the number of uh, free variables. So that was equal to the number of uh, non-pivot columns. If you go back to um, our discussion of the null space. So the dimension of the null space of A is equal to the number of the non-pivot columns in the reduced row echelon form of A, okay? Now what about the dimension of the row space? Dimension of the row space of A, okay? So if you go um, if you find the reduced row echelon form of A, you're, you're making linear combination of the rows, right? You're multiplying a row by a constant and adding it to another row in the matrix A to get to the reduced row echelon form. So all you're doing is linear combination of rows. So you're not changing the row space. You're not changing the vector space that's spanned by the rows. But you do, you do, you find the reduced row echelon form until you have a bunch of rows with pivot columns and then you have zeros on the bottom, okay? So the rows with the pivot columns in them are the uh, linearly independent rows and th that's just going to be equal to the uh, number of pivot columns. So the dimension of the row space of A is just going to be equal to the number of the um, pivot columns. Okay? So this, the sum of these two, then, the sum of these two dimensions is going to be the total number of columns of this matrix. So this matrix has M rows and N columns. So this is going to be uh, n, okay? So the sum of these two dimensions is going to be the number of columns, n. Um, what that means is that uh, it's basically the, the combination of these two subspaces will give us the entire vector space of n by 1 matrices, right? 
because we have n basis functions here that, uh, for both of these. So what we, what we say is that the null space and the row space are orthogonal complements. So the null of A and the row of space of A, they're orthogonal to each other. Vectors in each of these spaces are orthogonal to vectors in the other space. But when you combine them together, you get the big vector space of all n by 1 matrices. So we say null A plus row A are orthogonal complements. OK, so that's a new definition that's sometimes used. Um, there's a very important uh, final thing I want to say here. Uh, we have um, the dimension of the row space is equal to the number of uh, pivot columns. But if you remember, we just talked about the column space in the last video. The dimension of the column space of A is also equal to the number of pivot columns. Okay? So the dimension of the row space is the number of the pivot columns. The dimension of the column space is the number of pivot columns. So that means the dimension of the null space equals the dimension, the dimension of the row space is equal to the dimension of the column space. So the dimension of the row space of A equal to the number of pivot columns is equal to the dimension of the column space of A, also equal to the number of pivot columns. And this is a very interesting result because the row space is a subspace of all n by 1 column vectors, while the column space is a subspace of all m by 1 column vectors. So these are two subspaces of different vector spaces yet their dimensions are equal. The dimension of the row space of a matrix is equal to the dimension of the column space of a matrix. This is a very important result, and this is what is called the rank of the matrix. Okay? So that defines the meaning of rank, which is uh, widely used when talking about matrices. Um, another way of looking at the rank of a matrix is that the rank of a matrix is the number of linearly independent columns that this matrix has. On the other hand, the rank of a matrix is also equal to the number of linearly independent rows that the matrix has. Right? The number of lin linearly independent columns is equal to the number of linearly independent rows. Rather amazing result that you can relate both the rows and the columns of a matrix. OK, so let me summarize. This is our uh, last um, topic about the fundamental subspaces of a matrix. We have four fundamental subspaces of a matrix. Uh, we have the null space and the column space. And here I introduce two more fundamental subspaces. Uh, you can view them as the row space, which is just the column space of the transpose matrix, or the left null space, which is the uh, null space of the transpose matrix. Um, the important result here is that the, the dimension of the row space of a matrix is equal to the dimension of a column space of the matrix, and that's what's called the rank of the matrix. The rank is the number of linearly independent columns the matrix has, and it's also equal to the number of linearly independent rows. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.